Well, hello everyone. I hope you're doing well. I hope you've had a great week and a wonderful weekend. So we've been on a journey. We started week one, identifying your purpose and developing your why statement with the understanding that before one can live a life that matters, one must know what matters in their life. So understanding what is it that gets you excited and gets you out of bed every morning. Then this last week, we continue on this journey of self-discovery with the idea of before you can lead others, first you must be able to lead yourself. So the idea of self-discovery is gaining a self-awareness so that you can then begin on your journey of self-improvement. Self-improvement is good. We can all grow and get better, but you don't want to become your own worst critic. And yes, sometimes your own worst critic is no one but yourself. It's good to be self-aware. It's good to be on top of things that you need to improve in yourself and your work. And yes, it's true, there's always something you can do better, but it's all a matter of degree. You know, you don't want to be so self-conscious about your imperfect areas, and who doesn't have them, that you become your own worst critic to the point where it impacts your behavior and how others perceive you. So there's a balance between self-discovery and self-destruction. We need to balance, you know, discovering who we are, why we do what we do, and learning how to become a better version of ourselves. I believe, each and every day. And doing this without becoming self-critical to the point that we're thinking of ourselves as a failure or of no value. When in reality, we all have strengths. We're all gifted in some way. You know, it's been said that all are gifted. Some just choose to never open the package. So the exciting thing about leadership is leadership and becoming a leader is something that can be developed. You have talents that can be developed into skills. A Harvard study conducted many years ago yielded the results that about 30% of leadership traits are inerrant or something you're born with. You know, that it factor that some people have, it's some sort of charisma or something about them that you just naturally want to follow them. But the other 70% is acquired or learned. The great coach Vince Lombardi said, leaders are not born, they're made by hard effort. Simon Sinek that we've learned about suggests that to become a leader, we all go through a transition. Some go through it quickly, some go through it slowly, and some may never go through it at all. But it's generally because of choice, not because you can't do it. I believe there's four key things that must happen to become a leader. One, you need to have the desire and the motivation. Two, get the training and development. Three, the self-discipline, and four, see it modeled. I believe you have the desire and motivation, or one, you wouldn't be taking this class, and two, I wouldn't see what I've read in your reflections and the assignments that you've worked on so far. And then in this class, we're going to continue to work on the training and development and providing you the opportunity to dig deeper as you read articles and consider other opportunities that are afforded to you and we've already started the process of the the self-discipline and and the self-awareness and self-development and thinking about what you need to do to grow and get better but this week we're going to focus on seeing leadership modeled at its core leadership is about inspiration it's about inspiring others fred smith the founder and CEO of FedEx suggests that leadership is inspiring people to work for you when they are otherwise not obligated. So I'm sure you can think of an example of someone that was not in a formal title leadership position who inspired others to follow them. Leaders need followers. I may have to report to you or do what you ask me to do because you are my boss, but I choose to follow you. History is filled with great leaders, but also some pretty bad ones. And you can think of ones like Hitler that inspired a lot of people to do a lot of bad things. But we want to focus on how do we lead in a positive way. And we're going to look at specifically those that are in maybe formal technology 
positions like a tech coordinator or maybe have some influence as a principal when it comes to educational technology, but can you be a leader in educational technology from the position of a teacher? So we're going to consider what it means to be a leader and then what it looks like to be a leader in educational technology. So just a reminder as we get into the week, don't forget our key things to do, the lecture you're listening to now, the readings, the discussion, the assignment, but then the reflection that comes after you've done all that work. And I've tried to make it clear, but I want to say it one more time that the key for the reflection, it, it's for your benefit to really chew on, reflect on, and think about what stood out to you or what your biggest takeaway was for the week and what you learned about yourself and others. So it's after you've completed everything. The due date is set to be by 11.59 p.m. on Sunday night. But uh, if you're finishing your work later on Sunday night and you finish the reflection and submit it on Monday, uh, that's fine. I want you to really have a chance to to really think about and reflect and to post your thoughts. So don't just rush through that just to get a you know check. It's done. So let's look at um, one thing that's a little different this week for the lecture. Uh, if you haven't done this yet and you're listening to this lecture, I want to remind you to go back and and submit your definition of leadership. So you may have heard things I've said. Don't go look at definitions and go read uh, what others have defined leadership to be. Define it in your own words. So just click on that. It's a Google form. Uh, submit it and just put it in your own plain, simple words how you define leadership. And then the readings this week. So there's a great article there from Mind Tools, and it has plenty of links that will take you off to look at different concepts and thoughts. So dig as, as deep as you can, and especially when it comes to transformational leadership. And then educational technology, that um, article kind of helps us have a shared mental model of what we, what we mean by educational technology. And then this third one, leading with ed tech. So there, this, these are 10 influencers that have been identified. And I'm going to click on the page and pull it up here. As you go and look at these 10, and you can look as many as you want to, but what I want you to report back is maybe the one that you most identify with. And so you've explored their blogs, their websites, and then part of the discussion, you're going to have an opportunity to post why did you identify with the one you chose and how can you apply what you learned about them to yourself? And the other part of the discussion post is considering what you've learned concerning leadership and educational technology, what do you think is required to put all that together and be a transformational leader in educational technology? And at the top of the discussion post, there's a link. If you didn't get to it when reading through the Mind Tools article on leadership, click on it now and you can go back and look at those key areas they mentioned. Uh, you know, a transformational leader is someone who creates an inspiring vision of the future, motivates and inspires people to engage with that vision, manages delivery of the vision, coaches and builds a team so that it's more effective in achieving the vision. So that all comes to play as a transformational leader. Can we leverage that as a leader in technology or educational technology? And don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you post your thoughtful reply as well as a response to at least two classmates. So the assignment this week, a little more to it, but you have two weeks. So I want you to read through it carefully. I have also added a rubric this week. And so I want to take a few minutes now and I'm just going to walk through it. But let's look at the introduction. In module two, module two, you did a teacher leader self-assessment covering teacher leadership competencies, and they were organized into four domains. So go back, and it may be very clear in your mind after working through that, but review those four domains. I've got a link to that same assessment, or you can pull the one you worked on. And then look at those four domains of teacher leadership. And your assignment is to create a profile of a technology leader in education. So what I want you to do is identify a person. They can be in a formal position a technology coordinator, a principal, 
or an informal position, a teacher, but someone that you recognize as leading others concerning educational technology. So that's the reason this is two weeks. So this week, what I want you to do is to identify that person. And when you look at their requirements, this week, by Sunday, 1159, this first part here. So there's three parts to this, this assignment. So identify who you're going to interview. And you're going to plan to talk with them for at least 10 to 15 minutes. If you were able to do that this week, that's fine. But for this week, I want to know who that person is. So I want you to send me their name, their background uh, information, and how you know them. So you're just going to write it up in a Word document and submit it here as you've done you know, the prior assignments. And it's due by Sunday this, this week, one, uh, January 26, by 11.59. Now, the rest of the assignment, and this is what will be due the following Sunday or February 2nd. You're going to sketch out at least four questions, one for each of those four domains that was in that teacher leader assessment. So look at all the pieces to that and formulate questions. And then you, you can plan how you're going to record their responses. You know, you can record it to go back and listen to it later. If you're a good note taker, that all oh, that's fine. But then, and you can also do it by email or some other means that's convenient. Uh, I would recommend if it's at all possible to, to either do it you know, face to face, Skype or by phone, just so you can have the conversation. But then uh, the third part is you're going to interpret the responses and you're going to prepare a short five to 10 minute presentation. So you're going to use some sort of slideshow tool. You can use PowerPoint, Pre Prezi or any other favorite tool that you have. And then you're going to do a screencast. And that's basically what I'm doing here. You're screencasting, walking through the presentation. So you're going to have a voiceover. And so you're going to have a brief introduction to the person you interviewed. You can have images, whatever, uh, but show the questions you asked them. Talk, talk us through why you asked them what you did. And then, you know, kind of uh, uh, bring to a conclusion their responses and what it told you about leadership and education and especially educational technology and what your takeaway is. And so um, there's a rubric. I've got a more detailed rubric this time. But then you'll see it broke down here as well, identifying the interview. That's one part. Use of the four questions. That's another part. Interpret, interpretation of the responses is another part as you relate it to the four leadership domains. And then the presentation is the final piece. So the first part's due this Sunday. The rest of it is due February 2nd. So that final document, I want you to um, kind of include the notes for those first three parts and so if you want to do the first part and submit that the first part being who it is and their details and then you can continue on and, and fill out those other pieces and your notes about how you came up with the questions and maybe any scripts or whatever that you worked out and then the final piece is the video presentation that you will upload in studio and submit then after that there's the rubric if you have any questions or need some help please reach out and then you will finish with your reflection in your blog and you will post that. And remember, this week, just that first part, who the person is and their details. And the final part of this assignment will be due February 2nd. Have a great week and I wish you the best and we'll see you next week.